here's the thing about the future. If you knew that, uh, say, a levy was unsound, and you knew people were moving into the area, and you knew that they were at risk, would you stand by and do nothing and say nothing about it? Of course not. I mean, that would be irresponsible. Yet that's what we're doing as a nation to the future. We know that we have this problem. We know that the fiscal federal levies are unsound, you might say. We know that the structure is not sound for the long term. And yet we're ushering future generations in and, and saying nothing about it, doing nothing about it. And that's the immoral part of it. We've been through a lot together. We've met challenges and faced dangers. And we know that more lie ahead. Yet we can go forward with confidence because the state of our union is strong. I mean, you can look at, at things 20 or 30 years from now and say, this can't happen. Something will change because the debt is just too big. There's only one person who has the bully pulpit who can take this issue to the people, and that is the President of the United States. People may think somehow decisions are made by other people far away, but in a democracy, that's not really true. It is your representative in Congress or in the Senate that is influencing what happens. So it's pretty important for people to pay attention to it. It's actually not that complicated. You know, there's this, this old saying, there's no free lunch. I think that almost captures the whole thing. Just as for an individual in the final analysis, there is no free lunch, there's no free lunch for a, a national economy. We can't afford to pay all these bills, and if we just pay for these bills by printing money, then we'll destroy the currency, and that will be a much, much more painful reaction than us just uh, tightening our belts and living within our means. I do think that piling up more and more and more external debt and having the rest of the world own more and more of the United States may create real political instability down the line and increase the possibility that demagogues come along and, and do some very foolish things. What these various different deficits are suggesting is that we are trying to consume more than we produce. We can do that in the short run, but over the long run, it is, of course, impossible. Without savings, there is no future. I think there was a tremendous opportunity for whoever is the next president to really make a, a very big and important difference for this country by providing serious leadership on this very difficult set of issues. We need presidents who are so devoted to doing the right thing with and for the American people that they're prepared to lose for their values and to hang their values out in public for everyone to see them. I have three grandchildren. They didn't create this problem, but it's their problem. And if policymakers don't start making the tough choices soon, they're going to pay the price. They're going to bear the burden for the failure of others to act. And that's not acceptable to me. It's morally wrong, and it's time that we righted that wrong. You will remain Comptroller General of the United States until mid-March, is that right? Yes, I love my job as Comptroller General. I love the GAO, and by working together with my colleagues here, we've made a huge difference in the nine and a half years that I've been here. At the same point in time, I believe our country is at a critical crossroads. There are practical limits as to what I can do as Comptroller General. I can't advocate specific policy solutions. I can't be as aggressively involved in grassroots efforts as I think it will be necessary in order to achieve meaningful and lasting change. But I might say, Mr. Walker, your, your service has been in the best of what one would expect, somebody serving our great country, and I suspect you'd find that virtually everybody else would agree. Thank you so much, Senator Leahy. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve. Tell us about the Peterson Foundation. Well. I'm going to be creating this foundation from scratch to make a difference for the country. The 
the mission of the foundation is to get the message to millions of Americans and to propose sensible and workable solutions to address these challenges and to build public will to do something about them. I'm still going to be involved in the fiscal wake-up tour. You know, generals don't leave the fight, but sometimes they change their position on the battlefield, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. The fact is, is whether it's rain, or snow, or sleet, or dark of night, the fiscal wake-up tour rolls on. Live this morning in studio, Mr. Walker, thanks for being here. Tonight, David Walker says the country's biggest problem is our national debt. Finally, some good news about Iraq. David Walker, welcome to Hard Talk. We can't afford the promises we've already made, much less to be able to pile on top of them. Please help me thank this distinguished panel. Please welcome David Walker. We've got to re-engineer and constrain spending, and we've got to engage in comprehensive tax reform in ways that will promote economic growth, but generate more revenues. Okay, I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> Who is David Walker, and why should we care? That shouldn't be an excuse for us not to address this challenge sooner rather than later. After all, what good does it do to be the best looking horse in the glue factory? So, PETA, send your comments to the Government Accountability Office, David M. Walker, Controller General. Cool to be kind, it's a 